my work with the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission where I currently serve as Cold Water Research Coordinator. I'm involved with, with several projects and, and one of which is working with our, our stock trout program. And, and within that program we uh, produce sterile fish uh, for our stockings. And, and those fish are, are triploid, uh, triploid fish, which, which simply means that uh, they have an extra set of, of, of chromosomes than, than a normal fish would. And the reason that, uh, that we do that is to, to render those fish sterile. And, and that's, that's their goal of our, of our triploid process, is to make sure that the fish that, that we stock in those waters where we're committed to, to stocking fish to maintain fisheries for those uh, for those waters within our public mountain trout water program um, we want to make sure that the fish we put in are sterile and and that's that's why we uh, utilize the the triploid process so so the reason that we stock uh, sterile fish is to provide a, a greater level of protection for uh, our other, uh, for our, our, our native trout species, in particular, um, that's brook trout, which is the only trout native to to North Carolina. And by stocking sterile fish, it, we have the the ability to to, to make sure that if the fish uh, get into systems that we do not want them to, um, because certainly we do not stock on top of native trout, but if in case fish do happen to get there. Um, we don't we don't want their impact to, to be uh, to be that significant and so if they're if they're sterile they do not have the ability to reproduce and hopefully their their impact will be relatively short or, or not at all since triple a trout are sterile we maintain fertile brood stock and so once once fish are spawned shortly after the uh, the eggs are, are fertilized um, triploids are produced uh, via uh, a pressure and so uh, we we have uh, two machines that uh, we put fertilized eggs in and depending on how warm or cold the uh, the water and air, air temperatures are and based on the species there's essentially a recipe that based on the, the time after fertilization and those those temperature variables um, we apply a certain amount of, of, uh, of pressure to the eggs and it forces the retention of a second uh, polar body uh, during, during uh, meiotic division and so that's, that's how we do it and we maintain those fertile fish so that uh, we can continue to, to produce offspring uh, each year. So as the cold water research coordinator for uh, the North Carolina Wildlife Resource Commission, uh, I have the opportunity to uh, essentially think about, and in days that I'm lucky, I get to touch a trout just about every day. And I'm involved with all assets of the, of the cold water, uh, in other words, trout program uh, for the state. And that's, that's working with stock trout resources, which we've got over a thousand miles of, and We've got several thousand miles of wild trout resources, which are self-sustaining populations that do not need stockings. And I work with with all of the all of the animals, but I also work with the policy regulation, and uh, and I also get to work with 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 anglers and the public. And so it's a it's a diversity of all of those things that go into uh, hopefully at the end of the day. Uh, what we could consider as making fishing better and, and working to conserve our aquatic resources. My interest in, in this field came from uh, an early uh, uh, passion in, in fishing. Uh, that was what I liked to do and uh, I started out my, my education uh, going to uh, North Carolina State University uh, on a different track but I took courses that, that let me explore the natural resources and, and that that sort of science and uh, after after uh, undergraduate school I went to graduate school at Virginia Tech and, and uh, got a master's degree in 
fisheries and wildlife science from there. And uh, from, from, from that point was, was working with, with various jobs, uh, even working with uh, freshwater mussel propagation and, and other, other fisheries management jobs that I've, that I've had uh, with, with North Carolina throughout, throughout the last couple of years. The, the, probably the best advice I have for anyone interested in this career is to talk with folks. Uh, the individuals that are working in this career are, um, I think everyone will find passionate about what they're doing, uh, have a genuine interest in, in the resources, but also in working to uh, foster the next generation of, of, you know, those resource stewards, those people that are going to replace them and work with them uh, through time. And, and, and with that said, uh, they'd be happy to speak with anyone and, and give their own individual advice. Uh, and, and, and ultimately, uh, if, if someone has the, the opportunity, uh, there's nothing like getting, getting out and, and volunteering and, and being active in that field and being able to see hands-on what's, what's happening and, and the types of work that's that's going on and, and what it takes to to sort of achieve those goals and and certainly for me personally that that was one of the the more beneficial things that I was able to do and uh, I, I'm certainly willing to, to talk to anyone that that has that interest or if it's not me they need to talk to I'd be glad to put them in touch with someone that could likely help them.